Hello everybody and welcome to the video and today we are going to be going over Howl by Allen Ginsberg. JPEG for the video um, or thumbnail sorry. Um, <clears throat> so yeah this book um, is uh, number four in the Pocket Poets series. And um, there is a lot to be said about this. Um, and I guess I'm going to just start. So, um, as you can see in the table of contents here, we have um, the introduction, um, and then Howl itself, and then a footnote to Howl. And then um, some pretty, um, I wouldn't say silly, um, a supermarket in California is uh, pretty good. Um, a transcription of organ music. Um, and then uh, America has some moments and in a baggage room at a Greyhound is actually... I'll say clever. That's kind of where I'm heading with that. Um, and then you have these four earlier poems, which um, I think are before uh, Ginsburg found his style. So what I mean by that is, um, like, if you look at these earlier poems, if you could even see the lights kind of bad, um, they are very much in a poetic looking form um form 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 okay and then when we get to like howl and um some other things it's a lot chunkier okay now um if you remember i don't know if i I don't know if I talked about this outside of the Poetic Anarchy course, but we did talk a lot about this in the Poetic Anarchy course, that um, how Ginsburg did his lines were like, um, a line would be as much as he could put in a breath, basically. So you have... Um, stuff like uh let me get to the beginning of this or are we already in the beginning of it oh yeah yeah so you have it just like coming out and just going and going and going um i apologize for any loud shouting or screaming there's a guy walking up and down the street um yelling at nobody there but he seems to be having quite a conversation with somebody but anyway so it's a line is as long as the breath will allow it to be basically so um let me not lean on the desk because that makes it a little shaky shaky um oh and i have a new setup here yeah um i'm unpacking boxes and um putting books up and things of that nature. So that's fun. Now with Howl like this, um, I will say it is a, a bit wordy. Um, I'm going to come right out and say it. But especially in, and I wonder actually i wonder if i could figure that out right now let me see does it 55 356 uh, it doesn't really yeah there's still 55 okay so anyway, what i'm getting at is how was broken up into three sections and the first section I really think that this, um, the way it is, works. With the um, who passed, who were, um, 
with dreams, who ate, who got, who cowered, who chained. Like, it's all of these lines talking about the the people who did these things. <clears throat> and when you read it at first, it almost sounds like it is referring to a group of people. And then the more you get into this, the more... Um, kind of down the funnel to like um, an individual it seems and then when we get into the second part we have the mulock bits um, and then when we get to the third bit um, this is the Rockland bit and I don't know if Rockland is a um, or was a uh, mental institution I get that feeling um, from it but if this poem was just part one um, I think it would be amazing um, and when it keeps going um, I understand the purpose of it but it is very long-winded, and that's fine if you're into long-winded stuff. But um, as you read through uh, this whole book, what you're going to see is it's good, okay? But you're going to see someone who sounds like they really like the sound of their own voice. And um, that is the impression that comes off of this. And the other thing is, is during this time, a lot of poets were basically doing probably more readings than they were getting their stuff out. So a poet liking the sound of their own voice would make sense. The other thing is... <clears throat> probably more so than any poet I've ever read. Um, Ginsburg really, really likes to name drop. And whether that be a thing for that's kind of like more of an inside thing between him and his friends, um, that's cool. Although it sounds like a lot of it is to almost show everyone that he is in this circle with these people. Um, and I don't know um, who came first, who was famous before who, or um, anything like that, but um, he does a lot of naming like he, he drops names so if you're okay with that and you don't mind long-winded stuff that seems to actually hit the same point numerous times from different angles then you probably love this and howl is really really good um I'm, I'm, i can't stress that enough but once you see it in the actual poem Howl, when he's doing the same kind of thing on poems with lesser significance, it almost diminishes how impactful the way he wrote Howl was, if that makes any sense. So, my question for you guys is, um, have you read any other um, Ginsburg books? Um, if you Have you read this? If you have and you liked it, let me know down below. If you didn't like it, let me know, know down below. Um, but um, in these Pocket Poet series, we have Caddish and Other Poems, Reality Sandwich, Planet News, The Fall of America, Mind Breaths, and um, Plutonian Ode. So um, there seems to be quite a lot of stuff um, that he put out and um, very prolific, but it always seemed like Howell was 
the biggest thing he did and never quite hit that again. And if I'm wrong on that assessment, or you like think that there's a bigger poem that he did that's more important or more um, well-known, um, let me know. Um, yeah, so what do you think of Hal? Do you like it? Have you, do, uh, blah, 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 blah. do you like this book? So with that being said, um, I need to quit hitting this fucking desk, guys. Oh, okay, so until next time, everybody, take care, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.